So when we think about some of the most memorable characters in the Resident Evil franchise, several will instantly come to mind. Like with Jill Valentine, the former Stars member who starred in the latest Resident Evil 3 remake, or maybe Chris Redfield, due to his role in Resident Evil Village. But another character in the series has definitely put his stamp in the overall story and timeline of this franchise, being involved in the many title games and movies throughout the years. As we watch this character grow from a rookie cop to a battle-honed government agent. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and explore the evolution of Leon Kennedy. What have we got here? where we'll break down his origins, his significant role in each of his main title games, which include his debut in Resident Evil 2, his starring role in Resident Evil 4, and we'll even dabble in the roles he played in in some of the side movies and games. What was that? But before we get started with the video, I just want to say my name's Hey Deva, and I do cover a lot of Resident Evil content, so if you guys want more of these types of videos, then please feel free to like and subscribe for more content like this in the future, and possibly adding me both on Instagram and on Twitter where you guys can message me there personally at any time. Better try a new trick cause that one's getting old. So starting with Leon's backstory prior to the events in Resident Evil 2, we've learned that this young 21 year old has just been recruited to become a rookie cop in the Raccoon City Police Department. And his interest in coming to Raccoon City was also magnified due to the bizarre murders and incidents around the Arkley Mountains proximate to the city itself. Bizarre murder cases have recently occurred in Raccoon City. There are outlandish reports of families being attacked by a group of about 10 people. Victims were apparently eaten. Which in this timeline would span in the events in Resident Evil 1 and a couple months after. But before his arrival to Raccoon City for his first day on the job, Leon would suffer a heartbreak, being left by his girlfriend, which would cause the rookie cop to spiral out of control and go on a drinking binge, which in doing so had him a full day late for his first day as a rookie cop in the RPD station. Which in hindsight was actually a blessing in disguise, because this allowed Leon to avoid the utter chaos that was going on in Raccoon City with the T-Virus outbreak at full scale at that point. Leaving the city in ruins and the hordes of zombies and monsters infesting every sector of this area. Which now brings us to his debut in the original Resident Evil 2 or maybe RE2 remake. And depending on the game we chose to play first, we will get to see quite a bit of difference between the two scenarios. Both in terms of location and character meetups. But the general point would play out the same. So for simplicity's sake, we will omit the exact details of the two Resident Evil 2 games and explain his general role in this title. So going back to his debut in RE2, Leon would arrive in Raccoon City, unaware of the catastrophic events that happened due to the T-Virus outbreak. But shortly after arriving in the city, he would soon meet a lifelong friend and another main protagonist in this franchise, Claire Redfield. Not bad. I never thought any of this stuff my brother taught me would work. Stars? A special force issue, huh? It's my brother's. That's why I'm here. To find him. I'm Claire Redfield. Hey. Leon Kennedy. The younger sister of Chris Redfield, who had the major roles in RE1, Code Veronica, RE5, RE6, and the upcoming Resident Evil Village. But after meeting up with Claire, both her and Leon decided that they would go straight to the Raccoon City Police Department in search of answers, survivors, and possible escape from all the monsters that lurk the city. Which the general premise of Resident Evil 2 would play out mostly in the RPD station, where Leon would be briefed on the cause of the t virus outbreak by Marvin Branagh, Leon's would be superior if the city hadn't been in ruins, giving the rookie cop the objective of finding the other survivors with the help of Claire and figuring out a way to escape the hellish nightmare that they're in. Oh man. Who, who are you? 
Oh, you must be the new guy. Leon. Sorry, but it looks like your party has been canceled. What happened? About two months ago, there was this incident involving zombies in a mansion located in the outskirts of this city. Chris and the other STARS members discovered that Umbrella was behind everything. They risked their lives to reveal the truth, but no one believed them. Not long after that, all this started to happen. Uh, uh. Hang in there. Don't worry about me. Just rescue the survivors in the other rooms. Here, take this key card. You should be able to unlock the doors in the hall with this. Now go. But just go. Fine, but I'm coming back for you. Just hold on. But along the way, Leon would encounter several characters and monsters in this game, with the prominent character being Ada Wong, the mysterious woman in red, claiming to be there in search for her boyfriend John. Sorry about that. When I saw the uniform, I thought you were another zombie. Who are you? Ada Wong. In a quick interaction with Ben Bartolucci, a journalist with a scoop on the corrupt details of the Raccoon City Police Chief Brian Irons. Let me guess, you must be Ben, right? Get up, now! And a snippet of Robert Kendo, a gun store owner in the city. Who are you? What are you doing here? Hold your fire! I'm a human! Oh, sorry about that. I thought you were one of them. What's going on in this town? Hold on. I don't have a clue. By the time I noticed something was wrong, the entire city was infested with zombies. But moving along this game, with the help of Ada and Claire, we see Leon manage to survive within the RPD station, avoiding the likes of the stalker tyrant like Mr. X, who's in search for the G-Virus sample and eliminating anyone in his way. to William Birkin and his many mutations due to the G-Virus infection. So in the end, we see Leon make his way to the Umbrella Corporation's secret underground laboratory, still fighting Mr. X and William Birkin, while also finding out the true goal of Ada Wong and her betrayal, which would be a common theme between these two characters in the subsequent years of this franchise, and to his escape with Claire Redfield and Sherry Birkin by the end of RE2. Warning, warning, the self-destruct system has been activated. Each train compartment will detonate sequentially. Repeat. Each what? Train compartment will detonate sequentially. Leon, stop the train! I can't. The door to the control room is locked. What? What is it? Sherry, get back!
So with the end of events in Resident Evil 2, Leon started off as a rookie cop unknowingly getting himself right in the middle of the T-Virus outbreak, but in due time would have him become battle experienced due to the nightmare he just went through, which shortly after Leon's, Claire's, and Sherry's escape from the Umbrella Lab, Claire would decide that she would continue her search for her brother Chris Redfield on her own, while Leon would take care of Sherry until both of them would be placed under government custody. This of course was a turn of events that would shape the rest of Leon's life, because now, not being given much of a choice, he would decide to become a government agent due to his battle experience with all the monsters and other BLWs that he fought during RE2. Well with this outcome, for the next couple of years, Leon would be trained to become a specialized government agent that tackles any kind of bioterrorism and in the meanwhile would not be seen or heard from again until the events that would play out in Resident Evil Dark Side Chronicles. After that, Claire set out alone to find her brother. And Sherry and I were rescued by U.S. government agents. We have the authority to do as we please with you. You and that girl. Just leave her out of this. She's an innocent. An innocent who carries the G antibody. Don't worry. We're taking very good care of her. Bottom line is, you have the experience we're looking for. So if you want this to end peacefully, you really have only one choice. Work for us. Which spans the storyline from Mari 2, Code Veronica, and the newest mission that you'll have as a government agent, Operation Javier. But before we delve into his newest mission, Leon was briefly mentioned in the original Resident Evil Code Veronica, with Claire sending out a message to Leon to let her brother Chris Redfield know her whereabouts, which at this point in the storyline, the siblings have yet to meet face to face. So later in Code Veronica, the reunion of the Redfields was partly due to the help of Leon's work in the background, notifying Chris to help his sister. Once Chris disappeared after the mansion incident, he was near impossible to track down. But using my newfound position in the government, I eventually discovered his location. I would have contacted his sister, but she was a ghost herself. So I turned my search over to Claire then, and eventually learned of her confinement on Rockford Island. I shared this information with Chris, and he asked me to arrange a rescue mission before he set off on his own to find her. Claire! Huh? Chris? Chris! I've been so worried! You kidding me? I thought tough girls like you didn't get worried. <laughs> What happened? How did you get here? Leon contacted me. Leon? You know him? Yeah. He tracked me down right after you went missing. Anyways, with that brief mention of Leon in Resident Evil Code Veronica, the next major role that Leon would have is in Resident Evil Dark Side Chronicles, with his new story arc happening as a government agent in Operation Javier in the year 2002, where in that mission, he would be partnered up with a new character by the name of Jack Krauser, a veteran with many years of combat experience, supporting the newly minted government agent in this case of apprehending a man by the name of Javier Hidalgo, who is found to be in communications with a former Umbrella Corporation researcher, with also the subsequent many incidents of viral contamination in this region of South America. This storyline would also revolve around another character by the name of Manuela, who we find out was the daughter of Javier Hidalgo, who like her mother, suffered an incurable disease that would eventually take her life. But as we learn later in the game, we find out that Javier has inoculated Manuela with the T. Veronica virus, the same virus that was prominent in Resident Evil Code Veronica, with the reason for this was to prevent her from dying from the same disease that her mother had. Also to keep the T Veronica virus in check, Javier had to constantly transplant new organs to Manuela to prevent any further mutations. This of course would have Leon bound to help the young girl and try to get her into US government custody due to her adaptation to the virus. With Operation Javier playing out with Leon and Krauser rescuing Manuela from her father, while containing the widespread outbreak 
outbreak of the virus. Also, another important note that happens during this story arc is Krauser's partnership with Leon and how the two had a mutual respect for each other. My mission is to eradicate this virus once and for all. And with your help, I intend to do just that. Well, I am a soldier. One of your orders are from the President. Then I'm on your side. Let's go. Time to kick some ass. Though not long lasting due to Krauser's injury to his left arm and his witness to the power of the T Veronica virus that Manuela portrayed during the final battle with Javier, because this small plot point between the two US operatives would come back again in Resident Evil 4, which I'll get into a little bit later in the video. So, with Manuela safe in the US government hands and is in strict surveillance due to her being infected with a T Veronica virus, Leon's next major mission would not happen until two years later with his major role would come in Resident Evil 4. Now much more combat experience due to his involvement in the Raccoon City incident and in Operation Javier. I received special training via a secret organization working under the direct control of the president. I was to assume the responsibility of protecting the new president's family. Oh, yeah. Why am I the one who always gets the short end of the stick? Yo, who are you really? Come on and tell us. You are a long way from home, cowboy. You have my sympathies. Guess that's a local's way of breaking the ice. Anyway, you know what this is all about. My assignment is to search for the president's missing daughter. What? All by yourself? We find Leon in a new mission to find and rescue the president's daughter, placing him in an isolated area in Spain where now he faces a different breed of BOWs which puts him in a trajectory to much more action heavy experience while introducing a new gameplay and camera perspective that to this day is still prominent in the Resident Evil franchise. So starting this game off, Leon would arrive proximate to a village with his townspeople acting very strange, but not to the extent that we saw with the zombies and monsters that we saw previously in Leon's other adventures, because this time around, the villagers are hostile, though very well cognitively functioning in a regular human capacity, which they're able to communicate, strategize, and plot their way to eliminate Leon. Why are these people? This of course would be the first that we see these types of enemies in the series and would be profound in the subsequent games. And it's nice that like Leon, we'll be facing something entirely new to Resident Evil and would have a lasting effect for years to come for the franchise. Where's everyone going? Bingo? Anyway, so the overall plot points in Resident Evil 4 revolves around Leon rescuing the kidnapped daughter of the president, Ashley Graham. Though this mission would be made much more difficult due to the many antagonists and a new strain that causes the villagers to act the way they do. With the main villain in this game is a man named Osmond Sandler, the would-be cult leader of the Los Illuminados, a former bioweapons researcher who was able to find the ancient dormant Las Plagas parasite underneath the Castellian castle near the village and his research and expansion around this area in Spain was made possible due to his manipulation of the local residents, which prominent members would include Vitoris Mendez, who was a former priest and leader of the village, allowing Sadler to expand his influence among the villagers. Perfect. The big cheese. What? to Ramon Salazar, the Castellian who Sadler manipulated to allow him to research into the ruins of the Las Plagas underneath his castle.
and to Leon's former comrade Jack Krauser, the same man that helped him during Operation Javier, who supposedly died a couple of years ago, but now has revealed his allegiance to the Umbrella Corporation and was the one responsible for kidnapping Ashley in the first place. Been a long time, comrade. Krauser. I died in the crash two years ago. Is that what they told you? Also, some side characters would make an impression in this game, which one also happens to be a recurring character from the past. Bit of advice, try using knives next time. Works better for close encounters. Leon. Long time no see. Ada. So it is true. True? About what? You, working with Wesker. So with the premise of the new strain of Las Plagas running rampant in this game, the rescuing of Ashley from Osman Sandler, and the other characters adding their own motives, we have Leon stuck right in the middle of all these plot points. Though by the end, we take down Krauser after he mutates his left arm, the same arm he injured during Operation Javier in Darkseid Chronicles. The power! You've lost it completely, Krauser. Prepare for your death, Leon. We find out that Louis Sarah assisted Sadler into the research into the Lost Plagas, but has now changed allegiance. Well, I see that the president's equipped his daughter with ballistics, too. How rude! To Ada Wong's involvement and attempt to retrieve the sample of the Lost Plagas parasite. Sorry, Leon. Hand it over. Ada, you do know what this is. Hmm. To eliminating Osmond Sadler and saving Ashley. So, uh, after you take me back to my place, how about we do some, uh, overtime? <laughs> Sorry. Though this game would change the course for this franchise for years to come, Leon's involvement in this title and the subsequent games and movies does not end here, because the next mission he'll have would have him reunited with his old partner from Resident Evil 2, Claire Redfield, which happens in Resident Evil Degeneration, with a plot stemming from an outbreak in Harvardville Airport due to the T-Virus, the same virus that decimated Raccoon City several years back in the Resident Evil timeline. So Leon, this time around would be sent to assist on this catastrophe due to the sudden outbreak of the T-Virus, and his combat experience with those infected with this strain was a major point as to why he was tasked to assist in this mission of containing the outbreak and investigating the factors that caused the incident. This would have him reunited with Claire again and have the two protagonists find out that some loose ends during the Raccoon City incident would resurface during this movie, with a man named Dr. Frederick Downing having a major role of conspiracy due to his prior involvement in assisting the creation of the G-Virus, the same virus that William Birkin injected into himself. <gasps> But now he is playing in the black market, trying to gain wealth using these viral strains, while also manipulating his way into a new pharmaceutical company named Will Pharma. Also another nightmare that does come back during this movie is Leon's battle against another G monster, a monster who has a semblance to William Birkin's later mutations. With the individual inoculated with a G virus was a man named Curtis Miller, a man who lost family members during the Raccoon City incident, but has now made it his goal to reveal to the world on what exactly happened during that time, and used himself as an example of what kind of monsters were in play during the viral outbreak. Though again, like his previous mission, Leon would help capture Dr. Downing and reveal his involvement in the black market and G-Virus strain. He would also assist in taking down Curtis Miller after his mutation due to the G-Virus, and would bid farewell to Claire again by the end of the movie. Though Leon's involvement in this franchise story continues on this timeline, with his major role happening in another CGI movie, which would be in Resident Evil Damnation. And at this point, we can truly see the battle experience that Leon has accumulated over the years, with the movie premise happening due to a civil war in Eastern Slav, and the involvement of bioweapons in this region made Leon again the perfect candidate for this mission, especially when we see former enemies from the past Resident Evil games being used as weapons, which was made possible due to the enhancement of the Las Plagas parasite that we 
we saw in RE4, which would allow those with a dominant parasite inside them to take control of those other monsters with a lesser parasite inside them. Also, this was compounded when we watched Leon battle against some very prominent BOWs, namely these gigantic tyrants, while also again reunited with Ada Wong. Anyways, while this plot summary of the civil war in Resident Evil Damnation happening in early 2011, there was a small plot point that happened just prior to the events in Resident Evil 6, which is with Leon and Chris Redfield's first interaction face to face, which is a surprise to me that his involvement with Claire Redfield in RE2, which happens in 1998, that the two main characters in this franchise would finally meet after years of battling BOWs, with their interactions summarized in one of Hunnigan's report and would be found in a file in RE6. As it goes, Chris Redfield and Leon Kennedy work for two different organizations and have no reason to interact with each other, but they do share one connection, Chris's sister, Claire. Following the mansion incident in 1998, Chris set out for Europe on his own, determined to bring down Umbrella before he left. He neglected to inform Claire as to his whereabouts, so she came to Raccoon City to find him. There she met Leon, and together they fought their way out of the horrors of Raccoon City. Claire was then reunited with Chris on Rockford Island. She loves and respects her brother, and she considers Leon a trusted friend. With Claire being a mutual contact, it would only be a matter of time before the two met. Although the interaction between their respective organizations are highly restricted, when they finally met, both were able to understand each other's deep convictions, particularly those related to the eradication of bioorganic weapons. The conversation that followed between the two is confidential. However, Hunnigan rolled down the details of their meeting in a report she sent to Adam Benford. Below is an excerpt from that report. Terra Save member Claire Redfield introduced the two, and they shook hands firmly, smiling. It looks as almost there were two friends who hadn't seen each other in 10 years. They didn't say much and it was a short conversation, but I believe they came to an understanding of each other's hardship and their battles against bioterrorism. I believe this meeting was an important step in breaking down the barriers between the US government and the BSAA. Anyways, this small interaction between these two would be very important for Leon's next adventure, which would happen in Resident Evil 6. So like his previous involvement with viral outbreaks and fighting against many BOWs, Leon would follow the same trend he did in the past, but his mission would have him travel across the globe as he takes down more monsters and revealing some conspiracies behind the said outbreak, specifically Leon's campaign, starting with a zombified version of the US president as Leon struggles to pull the trigger. Stay right where you are. Mr. President! This event would be the start of a convoluted plot that brings his story into a rabbit hole, now being partnered up with another agent by the name of Helena Harper, in which she would reveal to Leon some information in regards to the president's sudden turn into a monster and the outbreak that was going on in Tall Oak City. Oh Thank God you're both alright. How do you two know each other? That's Helena Harper. She's been with the Secret Service since last year. I can't tell you how good it is to hear you two are alright. Look, I hate to rush introductions, but I need a report on your situation. I just shot the president. What are you? He had already been infected by the time we found him. Leon. Leon did what he had to. He saved my life. God help us. All right, I'll submit the report. You two just focus on getting the hell out of there. The virus has already spread three miles past the campus perimeter and it's not slowing down. You need to hurry. Not before we check out Tall Oaks Cathedral. Agent Kennedy's got a lead that might tell us who's responsible for this. Leon, is that true? which later reveals that Helena was a victim herself because she was blackmailed by the current national security advisor, Derek Simmons. Leon, where are you? Simmons there. Yes. Hunnigan, you need to be careful. I think he's the one did who did I all. Did I hear my name? 
Simmons. <sighs> the President spoke highly of you, Agent Kennedy. Likewise. You told me you've been friends for 30 years. Tell me, is it true you were the only ones present at the time of his death? What are you saying? Well, you must be aware that you are both suspects in this attack. What? Agent Harper. At the time of the attack, you had abandoned your post. Leaving the president vulnerable. You must admit such behavior is suspicious. You son of a bitch! You're the one who plans all this! With what evidence could you base such an outrageous accusation? I am the National Security Advisor. It's my job to prevent terrorist attacks, not cause them. You liar! Elena. If the two of you feel so strongly about your innocence, then you should have no problem turning yourselves in. In which this psychopath believed that the events and information that happened in the Raccoon City incident should be kept a secret, and that President Adams' intention of revealing the truth during that catastrophe, smearing the United States government, would lead to a global imbalance and chaos around the globe. So the plot that Simmons concocted would be initiated, and the elimination of the current president would be set up, leaving Helena Harper and Leon Kennedy as prime suspects, due to them being the last known people with the president. President. Though as the plot progresses, we find out that Simmons would travel across the globe to China, and Leon and Helena would chase after him too. Though the plot was thickened with the return of Ada Wong and the small scuffle that occurred between Chris Redfield and Leon. Key witness, we need her. A witness? She's the one who did all this! No, it wasn't her, it was Simmons, the National Security Advisor. I lost all my men because of her! And I lost over 70,000 people, including the president, because of Simmons. Anyways, by the end, Derek Simmons would be infected by the current strain in RE6, turning him into a multitude of monsters, starting from a jaguar-like creature, to a T-Rex-like giant, and a large insect-like abomination. With all the boss battle encounters, Leon and Helena would come out on top, and eventually make it out alive, with also the added bonus of being acquitted from all the alleged crimes that were committed during the Tall Oaks incident, and the death of President Adams. Though with the end of events during Resident Evil 6, Leon's final adventure at the moment would happen in the movie Resident Evil Vendetta, which Leon at this point in his career has suffered a massive loss, causing him to take up drinking and being a complete wreck. The reasoning for this was due to a previous mission that he had with his comrades, which went AWAR, leaving Leon the sole survivor of the mission. And to make things worse, upon visiting the morgue for his fallen comrades, he again would have to suffer by taking them down due to their sudden revival after their supposed deaths, leading to a spiral down of alcoholism and the sudden recruitment by Chris Redfield and Rebecca Chambers, starting off the plot of bioterrorism again, with the main culprit named Glenn Arias as the main villain in the movie, as we find out that his new plan of causing mayhem was due to his wife's sudden death during their wedding, which the reason was a bombing during the event, leaving Glenn mourning for the loss of his wife, though this bombing was due to his involvement men as a shady arms dealer, causing Glenn to be in the government's hit list. So with the loss of his wife, and again the viral strain now engineered in a way that targets individuals, Leon now parted with Chris takes on zombies and monsters alike. And the portrayal of Leon as a burnt out veteran agent at the start of the movie, to a John Wick like character was certainly in full display. With this catastrophe, and another viral outbreak happening in New York City due to Glenn, leaving a mass portion of the population becoming zombies. 
Hades. Though in the end of the movie, Leon helps take down Glen Arias and saves countless lives in New York, helping spread the cure above the city and returning those infected back to normal. Anyways, with a plethora of adventures that Leon has experienced from the initial Raccoon City outbreak in 1998 and running up the next two decades onward, we see him evolve and grow as he fights against many more BOWs and the mass lunatics that continue to spread bioterrorism. But the future for Leon doesn't seem to be ending anytime soon because with the news of a new Netflix series featuring Leon called Resident Evil Infinite Darkness is bound now in 2021. As we see Leon again paired up with Claire Redfield in which the events taking place in 2006 as we watch the duo fight against zombies once again. And then the news of an upcoming Resident Evil movie called Welcome to Raccoon City which brings Leon back as one of the main characters, retelling the unsettling events during the T-Virus outbreak and reliving the events that span from Resident Evil 1 to Resident Evil 3. Anyways, in the end, the evolution of Leon Kennedy is an amazing ride to follow and I am sure that Capcom will continue to have him as a recurring main protagonist in this franchise for years to come. So what do you guys think about Leon and what role do you think he'll have in the future games and movies? Also, let me know which version of Leon was your favorite. Please let me know your thoughts on the comment section down below. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and stay tuned for more Resident Evil content in the future and in the meantime, feel free to check out my other videos on my channel which I hope you guys would enjoy as well. But other than that, you guys have a great rest of your day and I'll see you guys on the next video. We have to go. We don't have any time to waste. Go? Where? Hey, it's up to us to take out Umbrella. Hey.